What's going on everybody? It's another beautiful day. Back in Denver, Colorado, we've got some Magnum bikes that we picked up from eBikes USA, who is gracious enough to let them have them for the afternoon so we can do some new reviews. First one we're looking at here is the Summit. Now this is a hardtail electric mountain bike from Magnum. If you're familiar with Magnum e-bikes, they've got some old ones that are pretty similar. That would be the Magnum MI6. Similar hardtail design, similar with a three by seven setup for your gears. Here we've got a three by eight, but still pretty similar and kind of rare for an electric mountain bike or electric bike in general to have a multi-speed derailleur on that front chain ring. So we'll talk about that a little bit when we dive into the specs. To tell you a little bit about Magnum, they've been around a long time actually making electric bikes since 2010. So we're going on 11 years strong here. They've got some really great value bikes. They've been steadily improving their lineup and adding different models over the years. And they're unique in that they have a hybrid setup. So they sell with dealers. They have dealers all over the country and then they also sell direct to consumer. So if you want to order one and get it shipped to you, you can do that. If you actually want to go into a dealer and get fitted and you know maybe test ride a bit before you ride, then it's pretty easy to do that since they've got them scattered all over the place. And we'll include a link in the written review so that you can check out Magnum dealers in your area. So let's jump in and talk about the Summit here. Hardtail electric mountain bike, which means it has that suspension fork up front, but no rear suspension. So it's still going to be a lot more comfortable than, you know, say a city bike if you want to do any off-roading here but it's still not you know full suspension downhill level grade which is good because it weighs about 60 pounds so a regular mountain bike you know you'd want that weight down as much as possible you know maybe 30 to 40 pounds for kind of the middle of the ground for mountain bikes so something this big that weighs 60 pounds it's going to be a little bit more difficult to take on trails and you know, some more aggressive single track riding and you might not be able to anyways because this is actually a sort of a class two class three hybrid so it's got a throttle which there's a lot of mountain bike trails where you can't ride with a throttle so here's the throttle up here on the left grip and it's a, a thumb throttle but it's positioned higher up and doesn't have as much travel to it compared to the thumb throttles you might be used to that are typically low down and variable with a lot more travel it's a unique setup that you see on magnum but not a lot of other bikes now having the throttle is great if you ride around town a lot and you know, you've got a hub motor back here sometimes you're coming home from work you're real tired you want to rely on the throttle instead of having to pedal I like having that. Just keep in mind, if you're, if you're thinking more mountain biking, you might want to check the trails where you ride because that's going to limit some of the access. Having the throttle, having a powerful motor as well. The motor here is from Das Kit. That's a 500 watt geared hub motor in the rear wheel there. 500 watts and 90 newton meters of torque, which is a lot for a hub motor. Magnum's been using this Das Kit motor on their bikes for several generations now. It's a great performing motor. You don't notice that high torque as much on the Summit here because this one, this is a 29 inch wheel on here so a, a wider diameter wheel means you get a lower attack angle for bumps on the ground it's a lot more smooth and comfortable and especially since you might be doing some off-roading you're gonna be going over a lot of bumps but that's less of a mechanical advantage for the hub motor in the rear there but it still feels plenty zippy your top speed on this bike is 25 miles per hour with pedal assist only and then if you're on the throttle it'll go up to 20 miles per hour so this is a, a configuration you'll see on a lot of electric bikes uh, like the ones from Aventon, for example, where the throttle stops at 20 miles per hour and then pedal assist will go up to 25 or maybe even you know full 28 miles per hour, which is considered class three or speed pedelec. The advantage of this configuration is that it's, it's a legal class two. So class two is throttle up to 20 miles per hour. If your throttle goes faster than that, you're not gonna be complying with regulations, which do of course vary from state to state. California is most noted for having the, you know, kind of class one, two, three system nailed down in some other big states in the US. So a lot of manufacturers will comply with that even though other states may not care or really enforce stuff. So yeah, it's another, that's why I always say, make sure you check out your regulations <laughs> before you buy an e-bike. Now another upgrade on the Sun here compared to the mi6 and a lot of the older magnum bikes is they've got fully integrated batteries here so it's as you can see right here into the down tube it's nice and sleek their cabling is also mostly integrated through the down tube here they have some that are running on the underside of the top tube there but really well managed then the i love how the battery fits in here there's one uh, downside to it now is that it doesn't have a usb port older models had a USB charging port on the side of it there. So you could, you know, mount your phone or maybe power like a speaker or some additional lights. Uh, so unfortunately you can't do that anymore. But here, let's go ahead and pop the battery out. And it's, they did a great job with the integration here. So check this out. You just turn the key and it will click and then the battery is unlocked. So then you can just pop it out. Very easy to get out with one hand. 7.6 pounds on the battery here. That's 48 volt and 12 amp hour. 
And it weighs, uh, yeah, 7.6 pounds, so it feels pretty light. You know, you could leave it out of here to ride it without the battery if you wanted to save weight and maybe you're just doing some trails that uh, you don't feel you need the electric power for. You, you want to be careful not to get any of the connections in here, you know, dirty or wet. But it is on top of the down tube, which is nice compared to some that, you know, are mounted in the bottom. So if you take it out, then the wheel's going to be spraying stuff all over. Get this locked back in here and it does here i'm gonna unlock it again just so you can hear that it's it's got a really nice satisfying click as it locks in and since that key is spring loaded there you go you don't have to leave the key in while you're riding it or otherwise but if you do they actually fold to the side like this so it'll be kind of out of the way and I, I like these keys a lot because you can fold it and it's, just, it's nice and small and compact it doesn't take up very much space on a keychain so i think that's a great setup okay let's uh Let's talk about the, the mountain biking aspects of it here. So they've got CST Rock Hawk tires on the front and the rear. These are 2.4 inches wide, so they're not quite plus size tires, but they're on the bigger end for mountain bikes. You can choose between the 29 inch diameter and a 27.5. And the, the main difference here, if you do the bigger 29s, then they're a bit better rolling efficiency. They're gonna handle bumps better without feeling as jarring and a little bit better for high speed, but they are not as nimble or agile. So if you go down for the smaller 27.5, you might feel you know, a little bit more nimble on those. And also, obviously, if you're a smaller rider, the 27.5s will keep you down a little bit closer to the ground. There is just the one size available on this, which is about an 18 inch frame. Uh, I feel like it's kind of geared more towards you know, medium to large riders. And that's you know, one of the downsides here is that you can't go with like a small frame if you're a really small rider. But anyways, back to, so mountain biking aspects, the CSC Rockhawk hot tires are great for traction. Now there's different variants of these tires, some of which come with, you know, puncture protection and like a, a foldable bead instead of wire bead. So these ones here are, as far as I can tell, they're the wire bead with no included puncture protection. So you'd probably want to add something here, whether you just add some slime sealant or maybe get like a Tannis armor insert, especially if you're gonna be riding off-road in Colorado we've got goat heads all over the place you don't want to deal with fat tire or with flat tires especially when you got the hub motor in the rear there changing tires and any kind of maintenance for your rear wheel is quite a bit of work so best to be proactive and get some puncture protection the suspension fork up here from SR Sun Tour this is the XCT fork here so it's a spring suspension fork fairly adjustable here with preload and then it also has lockout on the right side and you get about 100 millimeters of travel here so this is a good middle of the ground fork pretty good performance here you can dial that in to fit it for your weight so it'll uh, and even if you're you know using it around town this can be really nice for just a little bit smoother riding on city streets especially got a lot of potholes anything like that something unique about this bike compared to some other hardtail mountain bike styles is that is it actually fully fitted out for com commuting accessories so we've got mount points on the back here to you could add a rack or you could add fenders so you could add some front fenders too so you could Put some fenders and rack on here that way you can ride it around and commute on it and then maybe on the weekend you take it up and hit some trails do a little adventure riding it's you know, kind of right in the middle as far as what you might use it for you've got a flick bell that comes up here good for notifying people that you're coming up behind them on the trail you've got reflectors there's no lights but you could you could add some pretty easily the saddle here is a pretty active one here uh velo saddle that's uh i mean it feels great it's when they're more active like this and more narrow that's better for more extended pedaling uh, without getting any chafing and i think it's a good fit here because you've got this huge 24 speed drivetrain so the derailleur here shimano acera this is one of the higher quality derailleurs from shimano you know it goes alta or excuse me tourney and then altus and after that you get acera alivio so that's good stuff here and a huge range on that cassette it's a nickel plated cassette that goes from eight to 32 teeth just an absolute monster range and then up front here you've got three chain rings that i believe go i think the low end is 28 and then the biggest one is a, a 42 tooth so that's i mean combined you you can climb pretty much anything with this it'll be great for more mountain bike geared climbing and then on the high end if you're using that 40 uh, 42 tooth up front and then down into your smaller gears on the back there I mean, you could handle some very high speeds you'd, you'd be able to ride a lot faster than the motor can go at just 25 miles per hour the shifters here are shimano as well but they're not a sarah so you have a sarah on the derailleur but then the shifters up here are the altus trigger shifters they still work great very tactile feedback these are really satisfying shifters to use 
but the downside of the Altus is that the high lever for shifting high gears is not two way, it's only one way. So you can push here on the thumb to shift low, and then you have to pull with your index finger to shift higher. Now the, I, I do wish they'd used the Acera shifters because those are two way on the high. So you can keep a finger on the brakes and then shift up or down with just your thumb. It'd be really nice on a mountain bike if you are going downhill and you wanna keep your fingers on the brakes. That is a, a fairly minor thing there. These are nice wide handlebars. I'm a fan of this since I'm a big rider and I have a very long wingspan. So I like having that nice wide angle for the handlebars. It feels a lot more stable. And this stem here is quite adjustable as well. You do need a tool to do it, but you can you adjust that further back so you can get almost a, almost an upright seating position, not quite. And then you can you know, adjust it a bit more forward like we have it here, get a more forward, more active riding stance that's gonna feel better for mountain biking. So that's a great fit if you do a lot of varied riding. Just make sure you bring an Allen wrench, you know, multi-tool in your bag, and then you can adjust that stem on the fly. It's also nice if you're sharing the bike. You know, maybe a couple people in your house use it and they're a little bit different sizes. So you can tweak that as you go. Brakes on here are ones I've been seeing on all kinds of electric bikes lately, the Tektro HD E350. So these are e-bike specific hydraulic brakes. They have motor inhibitors. So when you squeeze those levers, it cuts off power to the motor immediately. And they've got uh, 180 millimeter rotors on the front and in the rear here with dual piston calipers. These are great performing hydraulic brakes. They require way less maintenance and fiddling than mechanical brakes do. Plenty of stopping power. I think it's a solid fit for this bike. You can see the controller right down here, which I believe is an 18 amp pure sine wave controller. It's interesting placement here, right near the bottom bracket. It's a little bit more exposed, but it is, I mean, that's very thick, protective, you know, plastic housing on it. And a, a perk of it being exposed to the air like this and having these sort of vents that are carved into it is that it gets a lot better heat dissipation. So, yeah. Okay, we're going to take a look at the control system and uh, the, the display up here. So this is another upgrade from the older Magnum bikes in that it's a C7 display instead of the older DOS kit L7. So this one, uh, it's got just a few more uh, kind of features and readouts. Instead of having the buttons integrated on the display here, you have this dedicated pad over on the left, which is a, a huge upgrade because then you can, you can easily change your assist levels or maybe turn on your display backlight without having to move your hand in from the grips. So to turn it on, you just press the power button here and you just have to single press it and it will fire up. You'll see it run through a few readouts before it turns on. Now the backlight is off by default, but if you short press the power button, it will turn on the backlight and there is a little light indicator there. You can't really see the backlight since it's very bright out, but even without it, very easy to see. I'm a fan of grayscale LCD displays because you can see them very well. It doesn't matter if it's a bright sunny day or at night with the backlight, super easy to see. There's a lot of color displays that look really pretty, but you just can't really make anything out on them. And you don't really need that many readouts for most riders. And any riders who do want a lot of you know, more rich information, maybe they're tracking their rides and various health things. They, they probably have a cycle computer and a paired smartphone app anyways. So I'm a fan of displays like this. You get your battery readout in the bottom right. You only get five bars, which isn't real precise. So that can induce some range anxiety if you're not really sure how far you can get. Uh, but it's still, you know, there's some that only have, you know, four bars. So it is still better than that. And you can see your voltage there. Pedal assist level in the top right. Now you control that up and down with a plus and minus here. And an interesting thing on Magnum bikes is that you can actually go all the way up to level six. And then if you hit plus again, then it will cycle back around to zero. You can't go in the opposite direction. So if you hit minus here, it's not you know, gonna cycle back around to six, which probably is good for a safety feature if you're trying to slow down really quickly and you wanna turn your pedal assist off. You don't wanna have to worry that you, you know, accidentally go all the way around to the highest one, but it can be kind of confusing when you're trying to move it up to a higher one because it's, uh, Sometimes the buttons on these control pads are you know, a little bit finicky. Sometimes, you know, you press it and it feels like you hit it, but it doesn't change anything. And so when I'm trying to switch up to the highest assist level, I'll just mash the plus button a whole bunch until I'm there. So on here, it's very easy to do that and you accidentally loop around. So I'm kind of mixed on that, but you know, that could be just because I'm not used to it. Your speed right in the center, it's in miles per hour, but you can switch that over to uh, metric if you need to. There's also a motor wattage readout in the top right that will show up to six bars for 
for how much motor power you're putting out and then you've got your typical trip timer and odometer down in the bottom right now there are uh, a few other features here there's a walk mode so if you hold down the minus button that will engage the rear wheel at a slow speed walking speed so if you have to walk the bike and don't want to push it along that is a nice you know maybe you're walking with a friend or you just you know, feel like walking for a little bit uh, and then as i mentioned quick press that power button for the backlight and then if you want to get into settings you hold down plus and minus at the same time for eh, a few seconds and then it will switch over to the settings however it is password protected and i don't know what the password is so we're we're not going to dive into the settings there today but that's where you would change like if you wanted to switch over from imperial over to metric or you know, there's other tweaks typically you can change like your tire size if you switched out to different tires and maybe like the backlight settings but i think they've done a pretty good job with the tuning on the bike right out of the get-go so the way it's set up is that you get full power assist from any any pedal assist level doesn't matter if you're in zero or all the way up in six throttle is always the same caps out at 20 miles per hour and then for pedal assist it essentially gives you a speed limit for the different assist levels so level one when you're pedaling the motor will cut out at about 10 miles per hour and then it just proceeds up from there until level six which will get you up to 25 miles per hour and that's that's just about the natural limit of the motor where it just can't handle any higher speed you can pedal past that especially since we have so many gears on this bike but that's uh you know, it's gonna get quite a bit harder after that since we're talking about a 60 pound bike here a few more things that we can point out before we jump into the fun part and do some test riding. Uh, they, they did include a sticker slap guard right there on that right chain stay so that the chain isn't going to scratch up the paint. And speaking of the paint, I mean, they did a great job. They actually have four different color options for the sun. Oh wait, uh, pardon me, it's just two for this one. So for the summit, you get two color options and it's, the option is for the accents. You can have the green accents like we've got here. They've also got blue accents. I think it looks really nice. I, I wish they had bottle cage bosses on it because they've, this would probably be a pretty good spot since it's a, kind of a, not quite a true high step. It's got a little bit of a bend there. So you could fit some bottle cage bosses here, maybe even on the underside, but since they've switched to the, you know, the integrated battery, they did make a few tweaks there. You get a kickstand as well, which this is another area where on a mountain bike, you typically wouldn't see a kickstand because that adds some weight and uh, you can kind of rattle around and get caught or snagged on things. But if you're riding it in the city quite a bit, you might actually want the kickstand. It's adjustable length, nice sturdy kickstand. It is center mounted, which I don't love because if you pedal backwards, then you're gonna lock up the pedal with the kickstand. You can see it's scratched right there already, even though this bike has hardly been ridden. You know, compared to a rear mounted kickstand that you, you can maneuver that in the garage a lot easier. And it's really nice for chain maintenance too. If you need to cycle the chain backwards to you know, apply some lube or maybe work on the tension, it's difficult to do here. You need to lean it up against a wall or put it upside down, but you don't want to mess up all the stuff on your handlebars. So that's just, you know, a minor gripe. Would like to see that moved over to the back, but okay, time for test riding on the summit so remember this is the 29 inch size for the wheels as opposed to the 27.5 this is a good fit for me because i'm six foot three i'll fit it a little bit better i've got the saddle raised up about to the max height and the stem fairly forward which is going to translate to a more forward more aggressive riding position like you would want for mountain biking even though we're not going to be doing any you know crazy off-roading on this unfortunately we don't really have good trails here to test it on but I can still demo the electronics for you and the shifter and just talk a little bit about the feel of it so we've got it uh, kind of in a really hard gear here so I'm gonna go ahead and shift down easier on my rear one there let's see we will turn our pedal assist off just to start out I'm gonna shift it down into the easiest gear so I want to get a feel for what it feels like to ride this like a you know, like a normal bike. So we'll shift that down to first gear on the front chain ring. We're down uh, pretty far in there. Let's go all the way to the easiest. Got some clanking going on back there. The derailleur might not be perfectly tuned. So this is, you know, if, if you were riding on a mountain bike trail and maybe you had your electronics turned off and you wanted to be climbing something more steep, you'd, you'd be down in the easier gears like this. And uh, there we go, all the way down into first. It's not liking that. So you'd be you'd be down in an easier gear like this with a, a pretty brisk cadence. Or even riding unassisted, it, it feels super comfy. This would be nice if you just want a little bit more exercise, or maybe you're riding on a trail that doesn't allow electric bikes, and so you need to you know ride with the motor off. Now having two shifters 
feels a bit strange for me on an e-bike just because it's it's rare for e-bikes to have this many speeds having multiple chain rings up front the reason for that is that you have the electrical drive system that adds a lot of power and help so you don't you don't need as many speeds you, know, you can handle more terrain by leaning on the motor but you do have all the speeds here if you want them so this th that does open up some options for riding in more areas and more terrain and relying on your motor a bit less you know we're able to this is a bit of a downhill but we can get some some good speed going here the whole thing feels amazingly stable i mean this is uh it's a high step frame so it's very sturdy can i shift this on up uh let's go ahead and shift it all the way up to the third so that's that 42 tooth chain ring in the front cool. all right so we're, we're up in a higher gear now and even you know with the motor still off i'm able to get i mean we're on 15 miles an hour here and i'm not really doing a whole lot of work and it feels great it feels very stable i don't notice any frame flex even when riding no handed which is nice if you're you know, if you do like riding no handed on occasion it can be kind of nice for your posture especially with a more aggressive stance bike like this where you're leaning forward you know this is my when i have my hands on the grips this is about how i look here since i've got that stem all the way forward now we do have full throttle from any assist level so even though we're in zero i can hit that throttle and we will take off acceleration is not as brisk since we have the bigger 29 inch wheels but it's still pretty good you know here's the hill right here i'm going to slow down and then just hit the throttle we're not accelerating very fast but we are moving up the hill just on the throttle so we're not you know not relying on pedaling at all and you know that's that 90 newton meters of torque back there so it'll do pretty good climbing even on some steeper hills i'm going to show you a close-up of the motor so you can you know, hear the volume of it That's as loud as it gets. Remember the motor cuts off at roughly 20 miles per hour or 21 or so as it, as it turns out to be. And that's just to make it a legal class two bike. Overall, not a very loud motor though. Like it's, it's fairly stealthy, which I appreciate. Let's see, we'll get around this loop here and then I'm gonna show you what the pedal assist is like. It's a cadence sensor for the pedal assist. So it's not as responsive as you might get from a torque sensing mid-drive motor but still fairly responsive as pedal assist sensors go all right so we're going to bump this up to all the way to level six which is our highest level oh i actually accidentally went around to zero so four five six now our battery is only at about 60 percent capacity which does affect the power of the motor Hopefully there you were able to hear just the delay from that cadence sensor. So starting out and stopping, the motor has a little bit of a delay relative to you know when you start and stop pedaling. Now you've got motor inhibitors on the brakes, which means as soon as you squeeze the levers, it cuts power. So you don't have to worry about a situation where you stop pedaling, but you're fighting the motor because it's still cycling. Now for riding at high speed, I'm gonna start really putting some effort into it. We're, we're in our higher gear, a higher chain ring on the front and we are just zooming right along. Very easy to get up to that 25 mile per hour top speed, which is where the motor cuts off. Now you could ride past that and we've got the gears for it. We've still got a couple more gears on that rear cassette before we're topped out. So realistically, especially if you were going downhill, you could probably pedal this, uh, you know, up to around 35 miles per hour before you would max out your cadence with the gears that you've got here. And we're not on the best terrain here for you know, really being able to test out the suspension on tires since it's more city riding here. But the just from a comfort standpoint, it, the, it feels great. This is a good high performing fork, pretty adjustable too. The, the wide handlebars especially help it to feel more stable, especially for, you know, if you've got really long arms like I do. It's it does feel it does feel very big and heavy. You know, it, it weighs in at about 60 pounds, so it's a uh, 
you know, that's a lot more than a typical mountain bike and having the 29 inch wheels on here, I like it, but it also, I, I feel really high off the ground, you know, compared to most of the e-bikes that I ride. And it doesn't help that lately I've been riding a lot of mini bikes that are you know, very short and low to the ground. So they, I feel like I'm towering up here. So if you want something a little bit more agile, more nimble, then you'd probably want to go for the 27.5 size wheels. So those are a little bit lower to the ground, might feel a bit more comfortable. I would probably still stick with the 29 just personally, because I would get used to it. And I, I like the big, sturdy and fast feeling of it. All right, folks, that is it for today for the Magnum Summit. Again, this is the newest hardtail electric mountain bike from Magnum. Nice upgrades from their older MI6 line, especially with the really great integration of the battery here and different sizing options for 27.9 or, or excuse me, 27.5 or 29 inch tires. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, Magnum does have dealers. So if you want to get one at a dealer, you can. If you're in the front range area in Colorado, be sure to check out eBags USA in Denver where they've got Magnum and a ton of other bikes. And thanks to those guys for letting us use these Magnum bikes for the reviews today. There's a link to the full written review in the video description where you can check out all the detailed specs and measurements and compare it head to head against other electric bikes. All right guys, thanks for coming along and ride safe out there. We'll see you next time.